City Church. We're so glad you could join us tonight. We're going to have a wonderful time in His Word. I'm reading from you tonight to, from Psalm 46, and it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God is in the midst of us tonight, church. I'm eager to worship with you, and I know that the Lord's got a blessing in store. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for your word, and God, we thank you for your plan for each of our lives. And Lord, we just ask that you be honored tonight in each of our hearts and our homes and our lives. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. I saw the Lord. Seated on the throne, he was clothed in glory and exalted high. And the train of his robe it filled the temple. The angels circle round him and cry. In your presence we find our 
We're so glad you've joined us this evening. Thankful for the worship. Thank you, Miss Rachel, for leading us in the presence of the Lord. That was wonderful. Appreciate that so much. For those of you that have been with us on Sundays, whether in person or virtually online, you know that we've been talking a lot about the power of the Lord for us in this present time. This past Sunday, we talked about proximity, our nearness to God. And I want to talk to you again tonight about prayer. But very specifically, I want to go back to one of the most well-known and sometimes the most improperly translated, communicated, or used scripture that we have. And I want to give you courage and I want to give you strength tonight. I pray for everyone who's afraid that you would receive courage. I pray everyone who feels lonely that the overwhelming presence of God would flood wherever you are right now. And I just want to speak a blessing on you tonight. And I want to talk to you about the true power that we have in prayer. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, the word says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. I want to celebrate with you tonight. I want to look into this scripture, and I want to say to you that although these are unprecedented times, we have the precedent of God that He can be trusted. He's a miracle-working God. And I just want to encourage you tonight. Father, I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for what you do. And although we might say these are unprecedented times for us, Lord, you know all things. And there is a precedent where you have already delivered somebody who was facing what we're facing. So, Lord, I pray for courage and I pray for strength. And I even have the audacity to pray for joy that is inexpressible and full of glory. I pray that somebody right now would be encouraged. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that your will be accomplished through this word and through this time of sharing. We do ask it in his name and we do ask it in faith and expectation. And the body of Christ, wherever you are, said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We look into this scripture and like I said, it's a a very commonly used scripture. But so many times I don't feel like people are getting everything out of this that the Lord is trying to say to us. And I don't want you to think that I arrogantly know all things, but I've been very blessed to have some good teachers in my life and some wonderful mentors in my life. And I've heard some great preaching on this before. And I've I've applied myself to try to learn and try to grow in grace and knowledge. And I want to go back and I want to look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14 with you again. And the word is so clear. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and turn from and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land the word of god is true and the word of god starts off this passage starts off with a two letter word that i've heard said before is the largest word in all the english dictionary it starts off with the word if And this two-letter word is so large because when you use this word if, it means everything after this word is conditional. The Lord says if. He begins this statement by letting us know His word is sure, His promise is true, but our reception of this is conditional. If. You see, this matches Isaiah 119. If you are willing and obedient, You will eat the good of the land. There are a lot of people today that have become willing. We have become willing because these are tumultuous times and these are dangerous times. And for some, these are frightening times. So we've become willing to eat the good of the land. But the Lord doesn't just say, if you're willing. The Lord says, if you're willing and obedient. We not only have to want the blessing of God, but we have to want God enough that we would obey His word. This matches John 15 and 14. Jesus speaking, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. This word if 
leads us into this wonderful passage, and it tells us that everything after this word is conditional. You see, God is sure, and the blessing is certain, but the reception is conditional. Whether I obey or whether I disobey, the reception is conditional, but as I was studying this, I felt the Lord speak to my spirit. The, the, the blessing and the word is conditional, but yet it is still very much possible. Mark, the ninth chapter, the 23rd verse, Jesus said, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I want to stir somebody's faith tonight. I want to encourage you and dare you to believe again and to trust again. I want you to start praying big prayers again. Start praying godly prayers again. Don't minimize God. He's God of very God. He is a God of heaven and earth. He said heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Solomon said the heaven of heavens cannot even contain him. I want to say to somebody tonight, believe God again. Trust God again. Jesus said, if we'll believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Well, we've got to be reminded that Jesus spoke those words to a man who had a nature like ours. And he was very concerned for his family. And I want you to hear this man's response to Jesus saying, all things are possible. Immediately, the father of the child cried out. He was emotional. He was hurt. He was at the end of his rope. Some might say he's a basket case. The father of this child cried out. He said, Lord, with tears, he said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. That's where a lot of people are tonight. We believe that God is able. But somehow there's a doubt as to whether or not he will. So many of you trust God for miracles in the life of Moses. But you need to trust God in your life right here, right now. He's not just the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of whatever your name is. Put your name there. I want to speak a word of hope. And I want to say to you that you may be like this father of this child. Jesus said all things are possible to him who believes. You may be like this man crying out with tears and saying, Lord, I believe, but I'm struggling. Help my unbelief. You see, that's what 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 is. God is giving the church very clear steps to help us in our unbelief. And I want to break this down. I'm going to go phrase by phrase. The Lord said, if my people. Right there is some help for my unbelief. The Lord is speaking clearly. And he says, if my people. This should evoke confidence in every child of God. It should stir up a sense of the reality that we belong. We have been considered and our prayer will be heard. We ought to be like the psalmist who said, The Lord, He is my shepherd. And because the Lord is my shepherd, I will not be in want. I will not do without. We should be like the New Testament writer that said, We've not been given a spirit of bondage again to fear, but we've been given a spirit of adoption whereby we cry out, Abba, Father and His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If we are children with God, we are heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Friends, i got to remind somebody that He is my God and I am His child. He says, if my people stirring within us that reality that we belong to Him and He Belongs to us. Now after we have shouted about being accepted and being loved and being heard. I want us to notice something else about these words. If my people. You see the command to pray is not given to the lost. The Lord doesn't say if Wall Street. The Lord doesn't say if Hollywood. The Lord doesn't say if Congress or if academia or if the world. No, the Lord says if my people who are called by my name. Somebody's got to hear this tonight. The command and the call to pray are clear for the bride of Christ to hear. We 
are God's agents of change in the earth. We are the catalyst of revival. Let us stop looking to the world for our answer. Let us stop looking without for help. Looking without will only produce anger and fear. But let us hear the call of God clearly once again. He said, if my people who are called, too many people think today that we will advance heaven's agenda arguing with the agents of lawlessness. My friends, that's not how we win. The bride of Christ wins when we are willing to get back on our knees. We advance heaven's agenda when we pray. Worlds are moved when we pray. Sins are forgiven. Diseases are healed Bankruptcies are over I want to remind the body of Christ When you pray Miracles happen Worlds are moot Sons and daughters are born into the kingdom of God When the people of God pray Let us understand that we are here To advance heaven's agenda We must not shun our obligation We must not feign a right relationship with God We must not pass the buck We must be people of prayer You see the reality is So many in Christendom are waiting on the world to change so that they'll praise God again. Friend, we're not called to look to the world for our help and the world isn't called to pray for its own revival. The church is here to pray for revival. If my people who are called by my name, you see, that gives me courage. Not only do I belong to Him, not only has He commanded me to pray, But in John 15 and 16, he says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. I called you. I ordained you that you would go bear fruit, that your fruit would remain, and that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you church. We are called. We are called to action. We are called his children. We are promised success that lasts. And we are promised that we will be heard when we pray in his name. Now when we look at this scripture, we're starting it off by saying if. And then he says, if my people, and then he steps it out further, if my people who are called by my name, and then he gives us a step, a major step that will release, that will release faith and courage in our lives. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. You see, modern religion in seeking to maintain status with this narcissistic society has placed entirely too much I in its message. We need our message to return to God's message again. The me generation of the 1970s has mutated into this horrifically selfish modern age in which we now find ourselves. The main problem with that is that the modern church looks tragically similar to the fallen world around her. Friends, we are not called to a me relation, a me gospel. We're not called to an I only gospel. We are called to selflessness. We are not called to selfishness. But we are called to a selfless humility that will lead us into Christ-like character. That will produce Christ-like ministry that this world is longing for. This world is crying out for leadership. This world is looking for people to lead them that years back we would have never said we would have ever followed. This world is so hungry for leadership. Let the church, let the church humble itself again. Let us be willing to hear the message of the gospel again. I must move from me to he. It must not be about me, but it must be about Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. When I look to the gospel of Jesus Christ, I hear him in Matthew 16, 24 and 5. 
If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Friends, do you see humility there? If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Friend, if I'm going to be what Jesus has called me to be, I've got to understand that the gospel was about me until I was saved. And at the moment I'm saved, the gospel is not about me anymore, but it's all about him. I've got to move from me to he. John the Baptist said it this way, he must increase, but I must decrease. Somebody, body of Christ, hear me tonight. Child of God, hear me tonight. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to get less of us so that we can have more of him. You see, when I move from me to he, then the very next thing I will be moved to is we. The reality is none of us are as strong as all of us. Let us put our agenda aside long enough to see Jesus again and to hear Jesus again because if I'll see him and I will hear him, I will hear him say to me, he has called me to a ministry of unity within the body of Jesus Christ. If my people who are called by my my name will humble themselves. Philippians chapter 2 says it this way, verses 3 through 5. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Church, don't be afraid to humble yourself. We are not called to selfish ambition. We are called in lowliness of mind to esteem others better than ourselves. Don't be afraid to reject the self-seeking attitude of this present day. Don't be afraid to reject the self-seeking messages that are coming out of pulpits in this nation today. If you try to save your life, you will lose it. The only way to receive Jesus is to deny yourself. And in that place of self-denial at the altar of the Lord, you'll begin to look upon others with a brand new light. And you'll begin to love selflessly. And you'll begin to care aggressively. Don't be afraid to humble yourself. Because there's a promise, Psalm 75, 6 and 7. Exaltation or promotion comes neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts one down and he exalts another. If we could stop competing long enough to prostrate ourselves again on the altar of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we could stop looking out for ourselves long enough to look out for somebody else, I tell you promotion comes from the Lord. If we'll pray thy kingdom come and thy will be done long enough, when his kingdom comes, you'll be smack in the middle of it and you will be blessed. You see, we've got to stop trying to earn blessing long enough To submit our lives to God. 1 Peter 5 and 6. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due time. There is a due time waiting on the United States of America. There is a due time waiting on the church of God in these last days. There is a due time moment waiting around the corner for you. But you're not going to find it grappling and coveting and just considering yourself. You must esteem others better than yourself. You must look out for their interests. You must abase yourself so that God is in charge of when and how you abound. I pray tonight, Lord, help us. Help us not to crave exaltation and promotion but help us humble ourselves enough to crave the advancement of others let us love oh God not in word but in deed let us Lord not seek just to be blessed but let us seek to be a blessing let us not just be refreshed but let us refresh someone else in the name of Jesus Christ 
Our Lord said he did not come to be served, but he came to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Let the church stop its covetousness and let the church lay aside her greed and let us lay aside this me generation thinking and let us pray one more time. Lord, show up in power. Lord, show up in glory. Lord, reveal yourself again in these last days. So the Lord said if his people who are called by his name, his name would humble themselves. And what does he say? And pray. My friend, I hope that you're praying every day. I hope that you're praying multiple times a day. Luke's gospel, Jesus said, men should always pray and not give up. First Thessalonians, Paul writes that men ought always pray. Pray without ceasing. Friends, Once we've humbled ourselves, once we've associated ourselves with the call of God, then we are ready to pray. You see, in pride we're not ready, but in humility we're ready. James chapter 4 verses 2 and 3, you lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive. Because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Once we've humbled ourselves, we are ready to to move beyond praying in our name or in the name of our favorite cause. And we will learn again how to pray in His name. you got to hear this tonight. There's so many people that are struggling in this life and they don't seem to ever get ahead. There are people that are murdering with the words of their mouths and they're covering what, coveting what somebody else has but they just can't seem to get their hands on it. They, they have their eye on what they think is the prize and the Lord is saying you got to get your eyes off of that. That's not the prize. It's not how high you can promote yourself. It's how low you can go in the kingdom of God in humility. My friend, if we're going to go back to having our prayers answered, then we've got to go back to praying, not my will, but thy will be done. And when we get to that place of humility, that we pray in his name again and not our name. John 14 and 13, Jesus gives us a glorious promise. And whatever you ask in my name, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus is looking tonight for a band of believers that will humble themselves to the point that we begin to pray godly prayers and not earthly prayers. That we begin to pray His kind of prayer and not my kind of prayer. It's not my kingdom come. It's not my will be done. But it's Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I pray for a humility that would break out in a God-given prayer and a God-felt prayer And that it be a God answered prayer. Touch this church that we might pray in power again. City Church, God is calling you. God is calling you. If you're watching me and you're not a member of City Church, God is calling you. He's calling us back to an altar of prayer. He's calling us back to a life of humility and a life of servant that does not advance my agenda, but it advances the kingdom of God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, look what he says next, and seek my face. Why is that so important that God would say next when we pray we need to seek his face? Because prayer for so many people is not about seeking God's face. It's about seeking God's hand. Or it's about seeking God's storehouse. You see what I mean when I say that is Many people, when they pray, only pray for their needs. That goes back to James 4. You ask and you don't receive because you ask amiss that you may consume it on your own lusts, your own desires or pleasures. The reality of the Lord is He doesn't just want us to seek His hand, which is power. He doesn't just want us to seek His hand, which is blessing. He doesn't just want us to seek His stuff or healing or peace or prosperity or notoriety. God doesn't just want us seeking His hand. He wants us seeking His face. And do you want to know why? Because hands can be mistaken. And goods can be confusing. But if you know somebody's face, 
you're not going to be confused and you're not going to be deterred. You see, God doesn't just want to give me things. God wants to give me himself. And God wants to receive me in return. What God wants is fellowship. There are a lot of people tonight that claim things as the measure of God in their life. I want to speak over you right now that God is so much bigger than your possessions and God is so much bigger than this life on earth and God is so much bigger than this short span that is but a vapor. Our God is eternal and our God has called you to something far more noble and far more eternal and far more considerable than just seeking the things that come out of His hand. He's allowed us to seek His face. He's allowed us to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace. God has allowed finite man to come and share in the infinite presence of an almighty God. I want to say now stop just praying about your needs and stop just praying about your desires and begin to pray, oh Lord, I want to seek your face. I want to know you. I want to experience you. God doesn't just want to give me stuff. God wants to give me spirit. That leads me to say, I should neither have nor allow any earthly relationship that rivals my relationship with my heavenly Father. I should be closer to no one than I am my heavenly Father. Once I've humbled myself and prayed, I begin to seek His face. City Church, let's seek the face of the Lord together tonight. Let's seek the face of the Lord together this week. We're starting a prayer initiative next Monday. We're allowing people to sign up for an hour every day. We got three different hours of prayer, Monday through Saturday. I want to say to you, there is no telling what God might show up and do if we'll humble ourselves and pray and seek His face again. I'm not just going to pray about the president. I'm not just going to pray about the economy. I'm not just going to pray about the coronavirus. I'm going to pray and sword say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. I'm okay with knowing you in the fellowship of your sufferings. Lord, I just want to know you. Glory to God. Somebody get past just praying for stuff and pray for the Spirit of God to invade your life. The reality is I could mistake someone's hand, but if I know their face, if I know their personage, if I know their being, goods can be deceptive. A sinner can have a Mercedes and claim blessing and that doesn't mean they're saved. Stop claiming things as your insight into God. Get a brand new revelation as you lay on your face before the God of all creation. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And here's what he said. And turn from their wicked ways. Friends, when you get a glimpse into God... You'll get a glimpse into you. And very much like Isaiah said, Woe is me, I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Very much like Simon Peter, when he saw that Jesus was God, he fell down and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a wicked man. When you get insight into God, you'll get insight into yourself, and that insight will tell you that you must decrease so that he must increase. There'll be some repenting going on. There'll be some prayers of repentance taking place. We talked about that recently. Repentance is a powerful thing in the presence of God. I want to say to the body of Christ, it is time for us to turn from our wicked ways. It is time for us to stop playing religious games and stop playing church games and stop trying to win arguments that are never going to do anything but land us in a devil's hell and let us turn from our wicked ways so that God can visit us one more time. 2 Timothy 2.19, Nevertheless, The foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Friend, if you claim Jesus Christ, you can't live in sin anymore. 
If you claim Jesus Christ, you can't live in bondage anymore. The word said, by our, by our words we will be justified and by our words we will be condemned. If you claim Christ, you're claiming a life of holiness. Stop letting yourself be deceived into thinking that claiming Christ gets you a life of leisure where you live in sin and live in slothfulness and inherit eternal life. That, my friend, is not the word of God. It is the doctrine of devils. But the word of God says, if anyone names the name of Christ, let him depart from iniquity. This is a solid foundation of God. It matters not what man may tell you. It matters what God would tell you. And the Lord said, if we're going to receive healing, we've got to turn from our wicked ways we, we read Sunday about the presence of God he sent his word and healed them and delivered them of their destructions it's so imperative that we understand God has invited us into his presence but if we're going to be there if we're going to live there we've got to forsake iniquity 2 Corinthians 6 17 and 18 the previous verses in this chapter teach us not to be unequally yoked believers and unbelievers it questions what Fellowship has Christ with idolatry. What communion has good with bad? What fellowship does light and darkness have? And here's what he says. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Do you see that there? Do you see that if we're going to be received of the Lord, we've got to come out from among the world? The Bible said if any man love the world, the love of God is not in him. Friend, we can't love God and love the world at the same time. Come out from among them and be separate. And I will receive you. I will be a father to you. You shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I'm telling somebody tonight, you don't have to live in fear. You can live in faith. You don't have to wait on the next bad thing for the newsman to tell you. You can start listening for the next good thing for God to tell you. I've got beyond just seeking for his hand. I want to seek his face. I want to turn from any dead path and any dead religion and any dead activity. And I want to be right in the middle of the blessing of God in these last days if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray will you join us in prayer this next few weeks will you will you let your schedule seek the face of God let worldly appointments and hobbies Lay idle while you seek the face of God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, it will be miraculously productive. I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Child of God, Stop waiting on the land to heal itself and hear the call of God for you to pray. Stop expecting the world to save itself. And you begin to pray that they might be saved. Stop looking to the earth for production. And look again to the body of Christ. For we are the agents of change in this last day. Somebody right wherever you are, say amen and give God a praise. The Lord said he would heal our land. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent therefore and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. Look now. So that times of refreshing. That's conditional. That's conditional. Repent and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. So that times of refreshing. May come from the presence of the Lord. We've got too many sinners today. That claim to be saved. And their sin is shunning. And refusing the time of refreshing. That this world needs. Stop arguing how much sin you can live in and go to heaven and start seeing how much heaven you can host in your heart and stay on this earth. I preach sometimes combatively. Sometimes I've been told I, I preach like I'm in a prize fighter. I'm a linebacker playing football. I want to tell you why. Because there's somebody watching me that you need to find your sin as detestable as God does. Hey! You need to hear from heaven. And if you'll hear from heaven, God will speak to you about your sin. And he'll show you there's a remedy for that sin. It's called the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Being baptized in water will not save you. We baptize, but it doesn't save anybody. Joining a church won't save you. Giving an offering won't save you. But the blood of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. One drop of that precious blood shed over 2,000 years ago. It will wash your sins away and it will write your name in the Lamb's book of life. And you, my friend, can become a part of the revival that this world needs. Don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the solution. And a Christian who's living in sin is a part of the problem. So I look at this scripture and I say if we've ever needed healing, we need it now. And I say it's time for the people of God to find promotion through humility and to find power through prayer and to find help through holiness. And I felt the Lord take me today to a story from the Second World War. On May 10th, 1940, 1940 Hitler had unleashed a military onslaught on France and Belgium. And within days, the British army, who was outmaneuvered and outnumbered, along with various other allied soldiers, had their backs against the sea, nowhere else to run. And they were surrounded by Hitler's army. The German high command was boasting that they were going to win and they were going to have certain, certain victory. It was thought that a third of a million soldiers would die in just that one battle. But it didn't happen because on May the 23rd, King George VI of England requested that the following Sunday should be observed as a national day of prayer. Late on that Saturday evening, the military decision was taken to evacuate as many as possible of the Allied forces. But on that Sunday... That nation devoted itself to prayer in an unprecedented way. Eyewitnesses and photographs confirm that there were overflowing congregations and houses of worship all over the land. Long lines formed outside of cathedrals. And that same day, an urgent request went out for boats to help evacuate those soldiers. And over 800 vessels came out to help. Yet we're told that even before the praying began... Strange miracles started happening on behalf of the Lord's people In a decision that infuriated his generals And cannot be explained to this day Hitler halted his army Sure victory was in front of him All the Germans had to do was advance And the freedom of this world was going to hang in jeopardy Yet for some unknown reason Hitler stopped German tanks and soldiers. They stood idle. I want to tell you why. Because the people of God were praying. Not only that, but bad weather on that Tuesday grounded the German air attack and allowed those boats to get people to safety. You see, by the time the German army was able to renew its attack, Over 338,000 troops had been snatched from those beaches, including 140,000 of them that would later return to liberate Europe. Now you could argue, and anyone could argue this was a, a coincidence, but I want to tell you it was not a coincidence. Even Winston Churchill declared Sunday, June 9th as a national day of thanksgiving because he said this has been a miracle of Dunkirk. I want to say to the body of Christ, the enemy may say, that he's got our backs against the wall and he might say that we're cornered with no way out but I say that a praying church is a powerful church and I say that a holy church is a helpful church and I say over you now that if you will dare to believe all things are possible to anyone who believes he's not just the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob He's not just the God of David facing Goliath. He's not just the God of the three Hebrew boys standing in front of Nebuchadnezzar in a fiery furnace. He's not just the God of King George VI, but He is the God of whoever you are, wherever you are. If you will humble yourself and pray and turn from any wickedness, God will hear from heaven. God will forgive our sin and God will heal our land. Oh Lord, let it be, let it be, let it be. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, a name that is above every name. I shout it from the rooftops, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Lord, I pray for the people of God, especially the expression of God that we call City Church. Let us be people of humility again. 
Let us answer the call of God. Let us not preach or declare a me gospel. But let us declare your gospel. I've got to move from me to he. He must increase. He must increase. And when we move from me to he, we can then move to we. And we, we're a powerful force to be reckoned with when we're humbled in the sight of God. We can be exalted in the sight of man. I pray for the United States of America. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this nation. I pray for our government that has gone awry. I pray for so many leaders in this nation that so freely speak blasphemy in your name. I pray for so many pastors in this nation that freely preach blasphemy in your name. I rebuke the doctrine of devils and I pray the gospel of Jesus Christ be preached and be lived in these last days. Oh God, forgive us for our greed. Forgive us for our materialism. Forgive us for our idolatry. Forgive us, oh God, for calling our idol a blessing. Forgive us, oh Lord, for our apathy and our slothfulness. Lord, Lord, let us have fervor again. Let zeal for your house light us up one more time. Illuminate us with your presence and your glory, O oh God. Father, I pray forgiveness on this nation for the sin of abortion. I pray, God, that you would forgive us. And I pray that you would send a sweeping revival that would end abortion in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you forgive us for the sin of drunkenness and revelry. I pray a revival that closes every bar. I pray a revival that sobers up every pastor. I pray a revival that sobers up every elder, every deacon, every Sunday school teacher, every member, every person claiming Christ, listening to my voice. Let them have some sobriety and holiness in Jesus name I pray Lord God a sweeping revival that would end the perversion in this land I pray a sweeping revival that would fill the house of God again to overflowing I pray a sweeping revival that would let me have the mind of Christ again that I would look out for the benefit of someone else and allow you to look out for my benefit Because your word still declares if I'll seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, everything I need will be added. I pray a sweeping revival. I pray a sweeping revival. I pray a sweeping move of your spirit. In Jesus' name, child of God, you hear me? You, my friend, are called to the battle. You're called to prayer. And a church that will not pray. Not only are they not part of the solution, but they are the problem. A church who will not pray is walking outside the power that Jesus Christ died to give us. I speak over your life right now. The gospel of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life right now. The anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak over the body of Jesus right now that power and miracles and signs and wonders can come again, but they will only come. When we've humbled ourselves and when we prayed and when we have sought His face and when we've turned from our own perilous ways, our own wicked ways, God will hear from heaven. God will forgive our sin and God will heal our land. Lord, heal the United States of America. Lord, heal the United Kingdom. Lord, heal communist China. Lord, heal Russia. Lord, heal Australia. Lord, heal all over the Pacific and all over Asia. Heal, oh God. Send healing to every continent and every tribe and every tongue and every nation and every land. Rain down your healing, oh God, we pray. Let us believe one more time. Let us serve one more time. Let us be a part of the answer one more time. I pray it in Jesus Christ's holy, wonderful, miraculous name that is above every name in the body of Christ that agreed. Wherever you are, said amen. Amen and amen. Would you, would you, would you consider making an hour a day to pray for the Lord to invade this nation? Would you consider humbling yourself and seeking His face and turning from any sin in your life? Would you consider that? 
And would you pray an hour a day for the next three months? God, send revival to this nation. God, send revival to this nation that doesn't hinge on the presidential election. Send a revival to this nation that doesn't revolve around Wall Street. Send a revival to this nation that sports cannot compete with. Send a revival that all idols will be thrown into the fire that no lives ever will be. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We are thrilled that you joined us here at City Church. And we want you to stay in touch with us. There's several ways that you can do that. You can message us through the City Church Gadsden Facebook. Or you can go to citychurchrbc.com forward slash connect and fill out a connection card. Another way is you can text us at 256-459-8310. Text us and let us know, hey, I got saved. Or God's doing a work in my life. Or I need help. I need prayer. Let us know what's going on in your life. Great things are happening here at City Church, and we are thrilled to have you here with us. God bless, and have a great day.